Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 74. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics being released June 26, 2013. I'm going to do things a little differently this week. There are a ton of great books out this week, so we have a lot of books to get through. Now last year at this time in comic segment number 20, I broke from the usual and gave you a rundown of why I liked each of the different titles that week, and that turned out to be one of the most popular episodes to date. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's titled New Comics 6 2012. So, back by popular demand, I'll run down the top 10 books I liked this week and I'll tell you why I like them, starting at number one with Wake number two. They call it the Ghost Rig, a secret underwater oil rig with roughnecks and scientists on the brink of an incredible discovery. But when things go horribly wrong, this scientific safe haven will turn into a house of horrors at the bottom of the ocean. Part two of the incredible new series by Scott Snyder and Sean Murphy. Here's what I like about this book. I like that DC is getting back into the Vertigo vibe, with, and this book is a good example of what made Vertigo great. We've seen what Snyder can do in Batman and what Murphy can do with Punk Rock Jesus, and putting them together on this book is a great match. The story gives us an entry point through our central character that brings us into a world of mystery, suspense, and of course danger. We're only one issue in, but I can't wait for the next one. Number two, we've got all-new X-Men number 13. The all-new X-Men are hot on the trail of the culprits that have been framing them for a number of high-stakes crimes. Though, will the original team of Merry Mutants be able to take down the threat of Mystique and her own team with Sabretooth and Lady Mastermind? Now here's what I like about this book. The time-traveling X-Men idea has been masterfully pulled off here, giving us a real lens to see how much these characters have changed over the years. Indeed, how much the Marvel Universe, and by expansion the comics industry, has changed. And at times they demonstrate not just the naive innocence of youth, but also of a past era. Brian Michael Bendis does a great job of capturing in that jarring dynamic as past meets present. At number three, we've got Hawkeye number 11, the breakout character of 2012, becomes the breakout character of 2013 as Pizza Dog gets his own issue. Literally, the entire issue. It's all from the dog's point of view. Pizza Dog gets hired to solve a crime, the grisly murder that shocked Team Hawkeye. The only thing more shocking than that is what happens at the end of this. Seriously, this isn't a joke. Even the coloring, dog issue. We're all getting fired. Please read. Pizza is my business before it's too late for us. Now here's why I like this book. This has been a fun and enjoyable read, taking a very different look at the life of a not always so heroic superhero. It's that human element that we see demonstrated as we get more of a behind the scenes look at the not always glamorous yet still fairly exciting everyday life of one of the Avengers when he's not, well, avenging. Uh, It's a great balance of drama, humor, and action by Matt Fraction. At number four, we've got Batman Superman number one. A new epic begins with the debut of this new ongoing series. Don't miss the first fateful meeting of Batman and Superman in the new 52. And here's why I like this book. Well, at least here's why I hope I like this book, since it's still the first issue. But here's why I'm looking forward to. The relationship between Batman and Superman that I've enjoyed has always had an edge of tension to it. As seen in the previous Superman-Batman title and their inner monologues analyzing and criticizing the methods and behaviors of each other, we see each hero in a new light reflected from a very different perspective. The different motivations and approaches can at times be complementary, yet at other times clash, but still provide insight together that you don't get from each character individually. At number 5, we've got Wolverine the X-Men number 32, Hellfire Saga Part 2. Wolverine has plans for the Banffs, meet the new Hellions. And here's why I like this book. After the events of Schism, seeing Wolverine trying to return to the X-Men's roots with the School for Mutants has been an entertaining and engaging storyline. His admitted, and frequently all too apparent, shortcomings have provided not only a humorous element, but also a humanizing one. The character development among the students has provided us a sense of belonging among those who clearly find it hard to belong to a group. Standout characters include Quentin Quire, a.k.a. Kid Omega, and the alien brood juvenile, Brew. At number 6, we've got Powers Bureau number 5. The Eisner award-winning Cops and Capes mashup continues. Walker is deep undercover in the most dangerous circle of super-powered criminal hell, while Pilgrim finds herself pregnant with something that may be killing her. The clock is ticking on the most dangerous case in Powers history. Now here's why I like this book. The Powers universe feels very real in a completely imaginative and fantastical way. It seems like the kind of logical response and results we would get if super-powered beings existed. The combination of police drama, super-powered adventure, and comedic interaction mostly through sarcasm, creates a unique experience and an interesting point of view for a world on the edge of losing control. At number 7, we've got Uncanny X-Men number 7. Dormammu's machinations have pulled all of the Uncanny X-Men into the hellish dimension limbo. Can magic match the evil demon lord sorcery? Is she even on the X-Men's side anymore? 
Now here's what I like about this book. Brian Michael Bendis has taken a group of broken and damaged mutants from the follow-up following the Avengers vs. X-Men and demonstrated the significant consequences of such a dramatic and enormous event. The refreshing take on actions having impact, and not just the return to the status quo that we see all too often in comics, gives the results all the more significance and provides us a great foundation to build from. Number 8, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy number 4. The biggest surprise hit of the year continues as critically acclaimed artist Sarah Pacelli of Ultimate Spider-Man climbs aboard. Gamora is one of the galaxy's greatest warriors with a deadly secret that could bring down the entire team. Now here's what I like about this book. It provides a step-removed observation of Earth from an outside perspective. From a galactic point of view, Earth does appear to have more than its share of heroic adventures that seem to result in defying cosmic odds and avoiding destruction time and again. What kind of reputation would that build? What kind of resentment would that create? And who is there to protect us from retaliation? We get a classic take on a ragtag group of misfits that find strength together and a synergy as a team that has escaped them as individuals. And it's in space. Number 9, we've got Nova number 5. The origin of the most talked about new character of the year comes at a shattering conclusion. Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness, two of the most popular creators in comics, bring you an infinite... Lee, dramatic turning point in the life of Nova as he discovers that something out in the galaxy is threatening everything he knows. Now here's what I like about this book. This has been another opportunity to create the traditional everyman who finds himself on the hero's journey and subsequent adventure, finding unknown strength and courage to face impossible odds and overcome incredible threats. This is the bridge from the common to the fantastic, and it's happening to a young boy who, like we saw in the previous Guardians review, didn't quite fit in and needed to find his place in the world, or in this case, in the galaxy. And at number 10, we've got X-Men number 2. The school is on lockdown, but if the bad guys can't get out, neither can the X-Men. John Sublime is back, but is one of the X-Men's scariest villains not who we should be afraid of? Who or what is Archaea? Now here's what I like about this book. Brian Wood knows how to write strong women, and yet this doesn't feel like a manufactured team of women for the sake of being a team of women, if you know what I mean. It seems like a natural collection of powerful characters that support and complement each other with their unique abilities and strengths, who also happen to all be women. It's not an over-the-top girl power declaration, which in and of itself is more of a statement of equality than anything else, isn't it? I know we're only on one issue so far, but I'm anxious to see where they go and what they do with this. For the best of the rest of this week from DC Comics, we've got Adventures of Superman number 2. Comics' finest talents have assembled to bring you all new, non-continuity short stories featuring the Man of Steel himself, Superman. This month's issue features a super artist lineup featuring the work of Michael Avon Alming, Joel Jones, and Giuseppe Camincoli with Sal Bushima. Next, we've got Aquaman number 21. Death of a King continues as Aquaman uncovers a shocking secret and a potential ally that could change everything Arthur's ever known about the Seven Seas. Meanwhile, the armies of the Dead King continue to amass as turmoil within Atlantis mounts, threatening Arthur's leadership. Plus, whose side are Merc, Tula, and Swad on? Arthur's or Orm's? We've also got Batman The Dark Knight number 21. The grand finale to the origin of the Mad Hatter is here as Batman's quest for vengeance reaches its conclusion. Next, we've got Catwoman number 21. Following the events of Catwoman Annual, Catwoman and the Penguin declare war on each other, and Gotham City is set to burn in their wake. Next, we've got Flash number 21. While on his path to finding the Speed Force killer, Barry must contend with the Teen Titans. Plus, the Flash beats Kid Flash for the first time. Next, we've got Justice League number 21. The march to Trinity War continues. This is it. Shazam's origin story concludes in an extra-sized extravaganza. As Black Adam threatens to gain control of all magic, Billy Batson learns that in order to stop him, he'll need help from the unlikeliest of people. But what greater role awaits Shazam in the larger DC universe? And what does the Justice League have to do with it? We've also got Justice League of America number 5. Reeling from the traumatic death following issue 4's cliffhanger, the world's most dangerous team discovers what the secret society is ultimately after and who they are. But can Steve Trevor get this uncontrollable team under control before it's too late? Plus a revelation about Stargirl leaves one of the team members out for blood. We've also got Superman number 21. Witness the horror of Hector Hammond as Metropolis burns. What happens when a city is taken over by a nightmare? Next we've got Talon number 9. In the aftermath of his encounter with Strix and the Birds of Prey, continuing from this month's Birds of Prey number 21, Calvin is sent on his deadliest mission yet. Retrieve one man from the deadliest island on Earth, Santa Prisca, home of Bane. And we've got Teen Titans number 21. Something is very wrong with Red Robin, and he's about to prove it. Can the rest of the Titans stop this tragedy, or is it already too late? 
From Marvel Comics, we've got Age of Ultron number 10 AI. One of Marvel's most classic characters, Hank Pym, stands at the crossroads. Faced with the dilemma only he can solve, Pym gambles his past and his future. Some men are beyond redemption. By story's end, Hank Pym will have an entirely new role in the Marvel Universe. Next, we've got Avengers Arena number 11, Hazmat's new romance with Reptile. And we've got Captain America number 8, the main event. Steve Rogers has one chance to set any of this right. Broken, beaten, and near dead, he must defeat Zola or all is lost. Plus, the reveal of the year, a character you never expected reemerges. Next, we've got Daredevil number 27, Red, Dead, Redemption. Two years of the most critically acclaimed series in comics, and it's all been leading to this moment. Close your eyes, Matt Murdock. Take a deep breath and feel everything you know slowly close in on you. Next, we've got FF number 8, Field Trip, Into the Heart of the Negative Zone. Scott Lang has already lost a daughter. Watch what happens when he puts it all on the line to save Bentley 23. The shocking reveal of the villain pulling the strings and pitting family against family in a rescue mission unlike anything you've ever seen. FF versus FF. Next, we've got Gambit number 14, unable to go to his agents at MI-13 for help. Pete Wisdom calls in his favor and tasks Gambit to recovering a stolen enchanted artifact. And if this covers any indication, this task is right up the Raging Cajun's alley. We've also got Ultimate Comics X-Men number 28, Natural Resources Aftermath. The Kitty Pride Jean Grey Showdown begins here. Utopia or Tian? Make your choice. Can Mach 2 rejoin the fold? Will she? Next, we've got Uncanny X-Force number 7. Secrets from the future and the past come to haunt Uncanny X-Force. What does Phantom X want from Betsy? What does Betsy want from Cluster? What does Cluster want from Phantom X? What does Bishop want from the 21st century? A body count or a good burger? We've also got Wolverine number 5. Drowning Logan starts here. Shield agents everywhere, but not a comrade in sight. Wolverine finds himself trapped on a helicarrier, and it's plunging into the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. And we've got Young Avengers number 6. Ever wonder what the superhero equivalent to a terrible soul-sucking, talent-wasting temp job is? You haven't? Oh, go on. Actually, no, don't. We've done it for you and written a story about it. This one. Wonder what Tommy, a.k.a. Speed, has been up to? Discover herein. Wonder why mutant David Aileen, a.k.a. Prodigy, hasn't been even in the background in any one of the 8,000 X books? Discover that herein, too. Existential horror turns cosmic horror as something emerges from the shadows of the past. It seems the Young Avengers have yet one more thing to worry about. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got the Massive number 13. With the Massive's trail gone dead, the Capitol is forced to respond to a different crisis, one very close to home. Navigating thawed Canadian polar ice into the turbulent northern Atlantic, the crew arrives at the most infamous post-crash disaster zone, New York City. Creator writer Brian Wood returns home, crafting another chilling near-future story on the same turf as DMZ, Channel Zero, The Couriers, and more. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Battlestar Galactica No. 2, Memorial Part 2. In celebration of the 35th anniversary of the original Battlestar Galactica TV series, Dynamite's brand new Battlestar Galactica series continues. Issue number 2 is written by Cosmic Supremos Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning of Legion, Nova, and Guardians of the Galaxy, with artist Cesar Razak from classic Battlestar Galactica and Vampirella vs. Fluffy, and legendary cover artist Alex Ross. Issue number two finds Apollo and Starbuck lost in time and space after a brutal Cylon attack on the Galactica resulted in a temporal explosion that consumed the Battlestar and whipped it from the timeline. Now they have to find a way to return home in a reality where the Battlestar Galactica never existed and the Cylons rule supreme. And we've got Uncanny number one, six billion skill sets, one last chance. Weaver is unique, or so he thinks. Born with an uncanny ability, he can steal other people's skills, their memories, abilities, and expertise. For a limited time, a man with a power like that could change the world, but as a professional gambler, con man, and thief for hire, Weaver prefers to look out for number one. That is, until he finds himself drawn into a dangerous game of international intrigue where the rules keep changing, the players are hidden, and the first thing he stands to lose is his life. And maybe, just maybe, he isn't so unique after all. From IDW Publishing, we've got Star Trek number 22. The fallout from this summer's blockbuster movie, Star Trek Into Darkness, continues here in the fan-favorite ongoing series overseen by Trek writer-producer Roberto Orsi. Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise face a dire new threat rising in the wake of the movie's momentous events. From Image Comics, we've got Bounce number 2. The good vibes and good times continue in this full-color superhero mega epic. The big question is asked, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of the world outside your window? Only the fog knows. Also beginning this issue, the mysterious origin of the bounce. Next, we've got clone number eight. Death comes for every clone. For Luke Taylor, it's just arrived sooner. We've also got Fatal number 15. A new arc begins. Fatal finally arrives in modern times as Nicholas Lash's research from his prison cell draws out old enemies and him with nowhere left to run. 
And remember, each issue of Fatal contains extra content, articles, and artwork that are not available anywhere but the printed single issues. We've also got Jupiter's Legacy number 2, part 2. The comic book event of 2013 continues as the schism between the superheroes widens and a plot to unseat the greatest hero of them all emerges. Celebrate the 75th anniversary of Superman this month by buying this frankly much more interesting book by superstar creators Mark Millar and Frank Quitely. We've also got Lazarus number 1, Family, part 1. In a dystopian near future, government is a quaint concept, resources are coveted, and possession is 100% of the law. A handful of families rule, jealously guarding what they have and exploiting the waste who struggle to survive in their domains. Forever Carlyle defends her family's holdings through deception and force as their protector, their Lazarus. Shot dead defending the family home, Forever's day goes downhill from there. We've also got Morning Glories number 28, and There Is No End. The double-sized conclusion to the Season 2 premiere. And we've got Think Tank number 8. Accountability isn't something Dr. David Lauren worried about before. Sheltered behind the manned concrete perimeter of CED, so long as he continued to fulfill his contractual obligation to create innovations of destruction, David never had to think twice about being an arrogant jerk. But right now, David is on the wrong side of the military's good graces, and accountability is a bitch. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Exo Man of War number 14. He is conquered, he is killed, but can he reign over planet death? Eric of Dacia came to Loam to exact his revenge against the alien race that captured and tortured his people. Now Eric must make a choice that will affect both him and the future of the Valiant Universe forever. Don't miss the jaw-dropping conclusion of planet death and this monumental moment for the ongoing saga of Exo Man of War. Alright, no time for trades this week, and I'm afraid that technical challenges have prevented me from producing videos for Marvel, DC, and Independence this week, but they should be back next week. Meanwhile, you can visit theleagueofnerds.com, our Facebook page, and be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can find links to everything in the About section at he'sgotissues.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and The League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've Got Issues.